you uh, know a new congressman from South Carolina? Oh, hey, Jim Clyburn. Jim Clyburn. Hey, how are you? When I ran for the House of Representatives in 1992, I knew about two pieces of legislation that had gone on before I ever got here. Drugs are menacing our society. They're threatening our values and undercutting our institutions. In 1986, the so-called war against drugs created mandatory minimums, established a 100 to 1 ratio for crack to powder cocaine, and put in mandatory minimums. Now, mandatory minimums were put in in 86. They were applied to first-time offenders in 1988. This, this is crack cocaine. It could easily have been heroin or PCP. It's as innocent looking as candy, but it's turning our cities into battle zones and it's murdering our children. In a nutshell, the president's plan doesn't include enough police officers to catch the violent thugs, not enough prosecutors to convict them, not enough judges to sentence them, and not enough prison cells to put them away for a long time. And when I ran in 1992, I talked about how bad I thought that legislation was. I was reamed. People took me to task for being uh, against that because the public was for it. And we took this bill up two, less than two years later in 1994, leading the charge on the bill with African Americans from New York, Rangel, Charles Rangel was leading the charge on that bill. Uh, and, and this bill did some significant things. Number one, it took the mandatory minimums off of first-time offenders that was put on in 1988. Secondly, it instituted an assault weapons ban. Thirdly, it put in $3 billion for prevention programs. Fourth, it put in the Violence Against Women Act. That's what I voted for. Now, we could not do everything we wanted to do, but we did all these other things. So I voted for that. That Barack and I finally reduced the disparity in sentencing, which we've been fighting to eliminate, in crack cocaine versus powder cocaine. It was a big mistake when it was made. We thought we were told by the experts that crack, you never go back. It was somehow fundamentally different. It's not different, but it's trapped an entire generation. And so all of this stuff about the crime bill, people talking about, oh, you're just giving uh, uh, Joe Biden cover. I'm not giving Joe Biden cover. I've explained to you why I voted for it. Go ask Joe Biden why he did. But people say that, you know, it at least perpetuated the idea that more people should be in prison. Do you ever think about that, that your support for this bill may have perpetuated um, mass incarceration as we see it now? Yeah, I think about that. I just don't think that's true. Suppose we had not done anything and just let the 1986 and 1988 stay in place. Don't do anything. Then what we, where would we be? Manit Remember, we took the mandatory minimums off of first-time offenders. So where would we be if we just let 1986 and 88 stay in place? Do we get any credit for what we did? Or do we keep listening to this foolishness? And that's all it is, it's foolishness.